I used to be married, and uh, I was a um, statistical cliche. My wife and I had careers. Um, we had a child. We were thinking of having another one. We live in a nice neighborhood, um, corner lot, brick home, four bedrooms. Uh, we had a child, a dog, um, the American kind of dream. Uh, we had goals. We had our plans. And uh, like I say, I, w I was a bit of a cliche almost. There were a lot of people like me. Um, it's easy uh, for me to remember how long I was locked up. Because it was like uh, Thomas said, it was 24 7. It was real simple 24 years and seven months to the day, exactly to the day when I got out. Just as today is my anniversary. Today, uh, a year ago, I walked out of the Williamson County Courthouse and uh, everything changed. <laughs> everything. I literally went from a, a world of concrete and steel to one of. Uh, marble floors and golden bathroom fixtures because that first night the Innocence Project put me up in a very nice hotel room in downtown Austin. Uh, the, the, the sensory overload was wonderful but uh, <laughs> um, I actually spent part of that night once I was alone walking barefoot between the marble floor and the carpet and back and forth. Uh, and, and I took a shower by myself for the first time in decades. People ask me a lot, you know, what's changed? What are you doing? Uh, you know, after that long, how's your life? Um, the biggie for me is I've reunited with my son. Um, while I've spent all that time knowing my innocence and just trying to adapt and struggle and fight for it, his 25 years have been compressed in just a few months. So his world is upside down, adding to the fact that he's a newlywed husband. Uh, they have their very first house, sign their mortgage papers in the delivery room when he just had a daughter. I'm now a grandfather, so he's got a lot going on. Um, and, and it's a big deal kind of um, learning who this stranger is. I'm also rebuilding not just my relationship with my son, but as you can imagine, Family members, um, I've had to you know, visit some grave sites, but I have nieces and brothers and sisters and uncles, and, you know, the whole, all of that goes on. Um, uh, food, of course, is new and different and very different from the penitentiary. Clothes are wonderfully comfortable. Um, you don't understand, you may not realize how nice it is when you're wearing Pants that fit or, or a top that's actually a little loose and comfortable and feels good on your skin. It's a, it's a blessing. It, it's, a, um, it's a tactile sensation you should embrace. Um, not everybody has it. And uh, I'm not sure that you can appreciate it unless you haven't had it. But I ask you to try to because you, you really need it. You need to appreciate stuff. It's part of being alive. It's part of being a human. It's part of being free. Um, the thing that's kind of getting me going, I mean, yeah, there, there are all kinds of new experiences, travel and stuff that I like, but the thing that gets me out of bed is, honest to God, I don't want what happened to me to happen to you or you or anybody. What, it wasn't any fun. And it could happen to you. It's only the grace of God that he picked my house and not yours. This isn't anything that we did or I did. It just happened to us. It's like catching the flu. Um, <sighs> Some things are going on now. There's going to be a rather rare uh, court of inquiry for Ken Anderson, the man who was the DA, who helped suppress or appears to have suppressed some of this evidence. Um, Norwood, the guy whose DNA was on that bandana, he's going to stand trial this January. Things are starting to you know, come together for that. 
All of that's fine and good, but it's not going to bring back my wife. It's not going to give me back my 25 years. It's not going to return my son's youth to me. I'm never going to see him play Little League or join the Boy Scouts or you know, graduate high school and college. And he just got his master, so I'm real thrilled about that. But um, something that we can do, everybody in this room, you, there's something that you can do that'll keep it from happening to you. Because it can. I'm proof of that. Because I was just like you. I, I, I hadn't done anything different. Um, and I think it can be done with a little bit of legislation or maybe procedural policy changes or something along those lines, something in this capital complex. Um, I don't think prosecutors as a group are the bad guys. Their job is putting the bad guys away. They're not the boogeyman. They're, you know, they should be embraced. They're our representatives. And prosecutorial misconduct, as Barry Sheck says, is not an epidemic, but it happens. Others who are much more talented and smart and educated than I am have started a website that you can go to, michael-morton.com. It also has a little link on there that tells you who your legislature is, depending on where you live. And a little petition that you can click on and um, let them know how you feel about this because politicians are people too. They have to weigh between public perception on one hand and the folks who contribute to the campaigns. I mean, they get them elected, and they have to do this balancing act. It's not wrong, it's not bad, but that's the way it is. And they have to know how you feel, and you can do it with a click. You don't have to write a letter, you don't have to make a phone call, you don't have to go in anybody's office and beat on the door, stand on their desk. It's real simple. Even I can do it. Um, I said the prosecutors aren't the bad guys. And I'm not looking for a, a revolution of the system. This is a small little tweaks in the law, things that we can, have, we can do that'll have a large effect. Um, and it can be done by the folks who are good at writing those things, and I'm not one of them. I understand I'm the flavor of the month. You're here because you want to see the guy who was in prison, the guy's on TV or whatever. But, um, you can let them know how you feel. Um, I told you at the beginning that I'm not here to sell you anything or get you to give money to any project or cause, but I'm here to tell you about you. And I say do all this stuff because you can act in your own self-interest and that's what most people do anyway. So this is a real natural thing for you to do. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for my dead wife or my little boy. Well, my 29-year-old little boy. But <laughs> do it for yourself. Because I'm telling you, it can happen to you. Because if it happened to me, there's no reason why it happened to you. Um, we don't want revenge. We don't want anybody's head on a stick. But think about all this is accountability.